I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today we dabble with a little bit of ours, and we start production of our magic facility. Getting started today, we're gonna get a little bit magical, and that's for good reason. So today, we're gonna be diving into Ars Nouveau, which I'm going to try my best with all the knowledge that I have of this mod and try to teach you the tips and tricks to really get started incredibly quickly and start to become the most powerful wizard you can and also explain why we might want to get into this mod at this point. Now, inside of this area, I have cleared it out. We now have this whole area pretty much cleared out and uh, flattened out. And for good reason, if we go down here, you'll see that all of this has been set up. I also drained all of the water for the most part out of here. Some water sources up here apparently did not uh, did not go through, but I got most of the water out of here and water is a good source of lag. So you definitely want to get water out of here. That's going to prevent mobs from spawning and all kinds of weirdness that happens in these areas. That's the only downside of living in a lush cave, but I did get it all cleared out with the builder the same way that we cleared out our initial area. Now, this area is going to slowly transform as we start working through Ars Nouveau. And um, I'm going to tell you, this area right here is going to be full of magic very, very soon. Oh, and to, to completely diverge off topic, let's talk about this thing right here. This is a carpet from the Utilitarian mod. This has a multitude of ways of honestly fixing the Wandering Trader issues you might be having. Um, instead of the Wandering Trader spawning in my face like it's been throughout the entire series, we can place this down, and it's supposed to spawn here now. So it should spawn here. I still want it to spawn because I like checking to see what uh, the, the trades are um, because it could offer something amazing that I don't have or may have to grind for. So it is really nice to, to have a spot for it to go. Now, back to Ars Nouveau. Now, if you've done any sort of exploring, you might have found a ton of Ars Nouveau items. So if we search Ars, these are tons of items that I have gotten from Ars Nouveau. Now, an interesting way that we can actually obtain more of these items um, is by honestly using another mod in the pack. And that comes in the form of the Gateway to Eternity, which we have used on a slime if you haven't caught the prior episodes. But this thing right here drops 10 dungeon loot rolls, and it is quite insane. Uh, I did test it out. I've tested it out once, and it is, um, let's just say it is kind of crazy. Now, to make it, it is very cheap. And we have, at this point, an easy way to take these guys out. Honestly, all we have to do is use the combination of our newfound sword and our spell book, and we can easily take out the multiple waves. So let me just go ahead and set this to something that has an area of effect, and it will just simply clear out all of these mobs super quick. And we will have all of our waves started. And uh, I believe there's only five waves, and each wave, by the way, spits out this, but at the end, it dumps out a ton of items. So for this case, I'm going to actually turn my backpack magnet on so that way the majority of the items we get from here go inside of my backpack. The big netherite backpack, by the way. Yes, here's more. And notice that just completely clears these guys out. And the remainder, we can go ahead and just wipe out. There's our next set of materials. And so on and so forth. Um, the waves don't really get that much harder. There are a couple of mobs that are going to... Uh, oh my gosh, there's just so much loot. There are a couple of mobs that are a little bit tougher and they have some armor. But yes, this is one of the best ways I can to just get a ton of loot going. It's it's quite amazing. Look at that. I mean, just sheer destruction. All right, and I think we have either this wave or one more wave. Yes, so this is the Undead Legion, which these guys are going to be a bit tougher. They have armor. But what I want to be careful of, it says gate complete. I want to step back. I don't want to collect this because you're going to see what this thing is about to spawn in. When this thing completely drops all of these items, this is ridiculous. Take a look at this pile. Oh my God. That was 10 chests worth of loot. And there is Ars Nouveau stuff in there. So yes. When we go to collect all of this, which is a lot, by the way, I believe there's Ars Nouveau stuff. We might be, I might be wrong. Yes, there is. So you'll notice there is some Ars like Wixie shards, but you get tons of dungeon loot. This is all stuff that you would find in dungeon chests, including these books that could get you on Elytra early on and fighting these aren't too hard. You can even get scrolls. Yeah, it is powerful. 
Now, I just wanted to show that because that is a way that you could technically, without needing to set up anything, you could just farm a few of these and you'd probably have enough Ars Nouveau stuff to really get you started. So now back to the true way that you can actually get started with this mod. And that is to simply make an imbuement chamber. We're gonna need archwood logs, so you will have needed to, at this point, have farmed an archwood tree. Notice I don't have any, because I've not really farmed any logs from that. Um, so, finding an archwood forest is one of the best ways to get a bunch of logs from this mod and also saplings, but we can also trade from the market. Um, so, the market is a little cute little device here that we can place down and we'll get a little market vendor. Um, and I kind of want the market guy to be somewhere over here. Um, it might, honestly, it should be able to fit in here somewhere. This place right here should be perfect. And <laughs> we're gonna notice a little fella popping up. There we go. So this is the swap o -matic. Uh, so inside of here, we should have a ton of saplings from literally everything that you would ever want to buy saplings from. They should exist here, even the ones from the Twilight Forest and all of the other mods. But notice right here, we do have blazing saplings. We have all the saplings from ours, and we're just going to need emeralds, which is the currency of the gods in Minecraft. And we'll just select saplings, and I'll just buy some of the saplings from each. So each type of tree, and you will need saplings from each type of tree because you will need logs specifically for some of the rituals later on from each type. Now the planks are all the same, but the logs are not. So they are very specific sometimes. These trees are also quite large. Whenever you grow them, look at these. But they do fit in this area. So having a large area for Ars Nouveau is going to be necessary. Even though this mod doesn't really seem like a lot, once you start playing around with uh, the mana and stuff, the source of the mod, and start moving it around and realizing you need to automate certain things like essences, well, that's when it starts to take up a lot of space. So making sure you have good room for it in which I've made mistakes before in the past by not doing that. Yeah, I definitely recommend making sure you have a good amount of space for this because you're really gonna want it. Now, one thing you may be wondering is why are we even getting into Ars Nouveau? Aren't we incredibly powerful at this point and don't we have most resources automated? Well, I'm gonna tell you that the Drigme in this mod is way more powerful than you might think. And there are actually some mobs in this pack that we cannot successfully automate without using the Drigme. And so having enough sustainable source to power that Drigme is going to be incredibly important and also setting up a nice farm for it is going to be important uh, because a lot of these bosses, specifically from Cataclysm, apparently can be farmed in this way, as you guys have let me know in the comments and over on the Discord. Now, not only can Cataclysm mobs be farmed in this way, but I'm also experienced with how you can actually come about um, grabbing some of these items. For example, all of these inks from the Iron Spell and Spellbook mod, and also even runes from these guys right here, right? You can actually capture these guys and farm them as well, in which I did actually manage to farm some incredible drops whenever I played this over on Twitch several, several months ago. An incredibly powerful mob is the Dead King right here. That would be great because it drops runes. Also, all of these inks where you can craft up all kinds of different things, but specifically these runes are incredibly powerful because these are going to be used to make these runes that you see here. And these are used later on to make other things and or also make an even more powerful uh, Morgan sword, which of course I would have to wipe this one, but you would definitely be able to make a more powerful version of this down the road. So back to the imbuement chamber, right? So now we can actually make some imbuement chambers and I recommend just placing some down, grabbing yourself some lapis if you don't already have enough source gems and just spamming some lapis inside of them and then letting them run. Now at this point, if you already have a time in the bottle, you can actually speed this up with the time in the bottle using some of your time and it will work as this just draws source naturally from the environment and uh, will eventually turn into source gems like that. So if you set up a few of these, like six or so, it will get you started pretty quick. The reason source gems are so powerful early on is because we need to make a lot of arcane pedestals, which means we need a lot of source stone. And source stone really eats away at your source gems uh, because you're going to need a couple of stacks of this. So that means you're gonna need several source gems in order to make enough stone to make the few things you're gonna need, such as the arcane core. And then you're also going to need a enchanting apparatus. This is uh, the first starting points of our crafting journey within Ars Nouveau. So once you have these, you just simply need to surround it 
with some of these arcane pedestals. I prefer to make eight from the start, even though you don't have to. But right here, you place the uh, core down and then you place the enchanting apparatus on top. And then you just surround it like this with these uh, pedestals. Now, these these things are kind of picky. Um, so if you have pedestals near pedestals, this might get confused and realize you don't have the appropriate recipes for things. So make sure you keep things spaced out and you can also place these further away. Um, but like I said, it's gonna, it's gonna require even more space, but you could make this even more compact. Just bear in mind the way that you place these. Notice I can turn these into platforms. And so you can actually place the platforms like this and it will also work. And I typically like to use this little setup, even though it's not necessary, but it looks a little bit neater, right? But this does care where these platforms are located. So you're gonna to wanna to keep them on the same plane as the actual core. Now let's talk about one of the most important parts of ours, and that is source generation, because we're gonna need a ton of it for a ton of different things. So in my personal opinion, early game, a really great way of setting it up is by simply farming things with a Drigme. So just farming, it will generate a little bit of source to get you started. But if you already have automated lava of some sort, like in this pack, we have lava automated, the best thing you can do is get into a volcanic source link and you can start producing lava at an insane rate. So a volcanic source link kind of works like this. If we were to place down a pedestal, notice yet again, we're using more pedestals. It can use two different sources. It can use lava or anything that can basically smelt things in a furnace. Um, and all we have to do, for example, I think even logs work. And I think blazing archwood logs are one of the better things that you can use on this pedestal, but it will consume it. And then it will start to generate source into a source jar. If I can go ahead and craft one real quick, it can start generating source into a source jar that is nearby. So that once it has enough source built up inside of it, it'll send it directly to it just like that. Notice it's 1% full. You can use coal. Like I said, anything that's burnable can be put onto this pedestal, including lava buckets. Now, the cool part about using lava buckets is whenever it does consume a lava bucket, it will leave the empty bucket, meaning it is 100% automatable with mods like modular routers. So going about this logistically and thinking about how this should work, we should basically have a modular router set up, and if we want to pull the empty bucket into the modular router off of this inventory, then we want it to right click onto the tank and pull the lava into the bucket, and then we want it to send that lava filled bucket back in the arcane pedestal, thus creating a loop. And to do that, it's quite simple. Let me show you how to configure your cards. Now, one of the first things I wanna mention is it will not be able to click off the ender tank. And I have to preface this every time because of how wonky this is, but you're going to want to open up your FTB chunks map. And in the bottom right, there's a purple button and we wanna allow fake players in our area. Otherwise, this may not work for you. Um, it will not be able to right click if you do not set this to allow. Um, so, or ha if you have this chunk unclaimed, it should work, but that's just something to, to recommend. Now, let's take a look at how to configure these cards. So we should be able to set this up as follows. We have a puller upgrade that's going to pull the item. We have the activator that's going to click the item. Then we have a sender that's going to send the item back. Now inside, we can get very specific with the location that it's doing this in. So for example, we want to pull and send from the front. So both our puller and sender cards are gonna be set that way, but we want this bucket right here to be pulled. So let's tell it to only pull an empty bucket and make sure to set this to whitelist. So now we should notice if the bucket's on here and we put this card in, it should pull a bucket in here. That's done perfect. Now what we wanna do is we want it to right click on this tank, the ender tank that we have set up with infinite lava in it, and we want it to right click from the back of the modular router. And so we tell it that we want it to only click with a whitelist, only click the empty bucket. And then when we put this card in, that should fill with lava. Now what we want it to do is we want it to send the lava back into the pedestal. So to do this, we say send the item, specifically only a lava bucket whitelisted to the front. And it's going to loop through this setup over and over again. So the, the way modular routers works is it's going to perform the actions that are listed in this row. And it's going to keep repeating this over and over again, looping the modules. And so in this case, it is going to constantly keep looping this or trying to loop it. Now, if you're on a server, I recommend setting this to eco mode 
That way, if there's no longer a need for this operation to keep looping, it will go ahead and it will stop and it will run checks a lot less frequent. So it's definitely recommended to put this in eco mode if you're going to be setting this up on a server. Now, another thing you probably won't need is speed upgrades because this is honestly way fast enough. And notice this entire source is completely filled already with just one volcanic source link. Now with a full understanding of how that works, it's time for me to start building. Now, when I say build, hear me out. I've done a lot of planning, all right? I've done a lot of planning and I've already built and destroyed something that I had set up, but I decided this might ultimately be the plan that I'm going to use. And that will allow me to essentially add more areas over here. Now, this isn't going to look the greatest at first, because it does take quite a while for this to oxidize like I want it to do. So once it is oxidized, it will fit the whole theme that we have going on here. Um, but I'm using this birch because this is actually going to fit very well with the Ars Nouveau bricks. And I do want to still incorporate some of the Ars source stone into this setup. But now that I have some room, we can actually get some automation going. And this will also allow me to expand into the walls if I need to. So this space I also have planned to have something pretty nice here in the center as well. It's not going to be just a simple space like this. And then this open area right here, I kind of want to have the whole thing sort of filled with some sort of source glass, something like that, where, uh, by the way, source gems like this, um, we can actually combine together. And if you didn't know, this is actually transparent. So we can see through these blocks and so we could have the whole thing right here filled with these source gem blocks, but we're going to have to get source gems automated. And actually it's not too difficult to do. So this right here to get that automation set up, I'm going to go ahead and set up a source battery that is going to use that same fundamental setup that we just set up a minute ago, basically utilizing the same activators that I had set up. So this time though, I'm actually going to be placing the Rs pedestal. I think I have one in here, the arcane pedestal. We're going to place it inside of its arcane platform mode, and I'm going to place it upside down, um, and which is kind of cool because we can place it just like this. And all we have to do is basically tell this to now work, like pull the lava from the top, which is where I'm going to have everything else. And then we just need to change the direction on these to be the downward area. Um, and then we just give it a bucket and it should work. Now I am using four volcanic source links with this one setup here, and then maybe a bit overkill, but it just makes sure to guarantee that we have um, a ton of source coming in. And so if one is not activating currently, then this other one will activate while that one is on like a minor cooldown. Now, what I'm going to do is place my source jars on the bottom here, and these should be able to detect where these source jars are and should be able to send some source to this, hopefully from here. And should, we should start to see these source jars slowly but surely filling up. Doesn't this make for a pretty cool looking chandelier? I really think so. Like even with some glowstone, if we were to incorporate some glowstone into this, maybe even some custom textured glowstone, this will look really good. So all we have to do is just sign it, kind of place in some glowstone like this. And this is a pretty cool looking little lamp. Now I've done even more building. I went ahead and extended these out to go ahead and get some stuff laid out. I want to automate this eventually with modular routers, which won't be too difficult to do. Uh, but let's talk about one of the fundamental uh, things that we can do with um, refined storage. Something that makes refined storage incredibly easy to use and the ability to send things cross dimensionally, like take your whole refined storage and have it accessible in another dimension but also you don't have to use it cross-dimensionally. You could just use it if you want to avoid taking cables from all the way over there and trying to pipe them over here. Now it will cost a little bit of power to do this, but we can use a network transmitter and a network receiver, and then also use a network card. And this is pretty cool because it will also transfer the power generation from this area as well. So down here, what I wanna do is I wanna place a network receiver. This is going to receive the information from our main network. And so if I place this down here and then I use my network card on it, I can shift right click to set its location. Now we need to take our network transmitter over to our base 
And this is where we can place it down and connect it up to our system by simply placing it right here, if that's what we want, and then placing our linked card in here. Now it says it's 128 blocks or so, uh, which doesn't cost too much power um, here in this dimension. You see, it doesn't look seem like it's costing any at all. But when you do cross dimensions, it does end up costing some power. But the cool thing is, is we can actually use this to now wirelessly have access to our entire refined storage system. So that means we can take a cable and we can start lining up cables and getting them all hooked up to things with exporters and all kinds of auto crafting madness. And as far as cross dimensional stuff goes for mods, this has got to be one of the easiest ways of doing it. Don't even get me started about how Applied Energistics has you do it. I don't even want to talk about it. So let me show you probably one of the most simple ways of auto crafting source gems. Um, and it's going to utilize just two modular routers. So we're gonna have a modular router here and here, and all we have to do is sort of place these in. It doesn't really matter too much where they're at, just so long as we have an input that's going to send items, and then we have an output that is going to pull the items from all of these machines. This is actually pretty cool. We can use these distribution modules, which are in insanely powerful in my opinion, uh, because they allow you to connect up to eight different things and send or pull from them. So if we open up the configuration, we have the transfer out or transfer into our router. For the first one, we wanna go ahead and round robin transfer out of our router, which is going to be the one that is going to receive the items that are gonna go in here. AKA, I'm gonna use amethyst or you can use lapis. I'm gonna use amethyst in my case. And then we're just going to simply click on them. And the side that you click does matter, but in the case of this machine in particular, it doesn't matter. So once I have that done, we can simply just put this in here and it's just going to be waiting for something to go into it. Now on this one, I'm gonna set this to pull items from the machines into the router. And so this is going to need a filter because unfortunately the abutment chamber doesn't have like a separate inventory. It will pull out the amethyst if it's not completed yet. So we are going to need to say simply only whitelist, only pull out one thing. And it's so cool because this has a filter in it. And so from ours, we can say source gem, right? Just pull out source gems from here. And that is going to send those source gems, making sure this is set to transfer into router. It's going to send it into this buffer. And then all we need is an importer, an importer and an exporter. So the exporter is going to export out of our system, out of our refined storage system. Um, and I'm going to have to use a crafting upgrade so if we're going to send amethyst to this, we are going to want a crafting upgrade put in here uh, to make sure we can auto craft from our essence. So amethyst, just like this, we'll go ahead and drag that in there and that should send the amethyst in here and we'll notice that it has now sent it into this and this has started to process while slowly processing because we haven't sent anything from these jars to this yet, which we're gonna do here in a minute. Now, all we gotta do to receive is simply put an importer on here. And now we have a very, very simple solution to our problem. And if we go ahead and speed this up, we will see that as soon as this is done crafting, we should see a laser sort of pull the item out of here. Oh, that's if we actually select the machines to pull from, which it did not do on this, this one. Let's go ahead and send that. And then we'll notice as soon as we put that in, it should pull the items out of here. Perfect, and then it refilled it back again, ready to go. So now that we have that set up, it will start working, we will be producing source gems, but I wanna make it a lot faster. So to be able to make it faster, I need to start moving the source around. To do that, we're gonna need a Dominion Wand, and this is actually incredibly important just for the mod in general. This will be used for a lot of different things. So you can place this recipe around, but we need to provide it with a stick, and this is one of our first times using the arcane uh, enchanting apparatus. It's pretty cool. You can actually make enchanting books with this, probably given its uh, initial name. But there we go. So now we have crafted with one of the main crafting mechanics from Ars Nouveau being the enchanting apparatus, a dominion wand. Now, source relays and source splitters are going to be some of the most used things uh, as far as transferring the source around goes. And these are kind of expensive. Now the source relay, they're kind of expensive in regards to it costs a whole block of source gems. Um, and we're gonna need a few of these and we only get one per. So let's go ahead and make two. Now the source relays can only send to one location so they can pull from a, a, a source jar 
and then that source jar, it'll take it from there, and then it can only send to a location. Um, so that is kind of the limitations of using a regular source relay, is it really is like kind of one directional, and it'll only take from like one source. Now to take from multiple sources into one source relay, that's where we are going to need a splitter. And splitters cost a little bit more and they require an enchanting apparatus process. So with some lapis, just like this, so four lapis technically, and we also need uh, quartz. Once we have that all set up, one, two, three, four, we can then do another craft, one, two, three, four, and that's why we have four of these set up. Eight of them is, is typically the, the thing that you wanna go with. We'll go ahead and hit that in there and bam, we are ready to go. Look at that. So we now have this crafted up and this is how we're going to link all of our source jars over here into our network. And so this should be as simple as taking this and placing this sort of in the center here. Um, if I can, I'm gonna place it right here for right now. And then we're just going to right click and then click, right click, click, right click until they're all linked up. And I'm pretty sure this does have a limit of how much it can ever transport. So this is probably overkill for this particular setup. We can definitely get away with way fewer jars, uh, but I am gonna go ahead and just try and link all of these together. And you'll know you've done it when you have this message that appears when we've linked this again. Okay, I guess, I guess it doesn't do that, right? I thought that if you click it, it'll say it'll remove. But no, they're all linked. Okay, so it is now taking from 16 locations. And what we can do is we can have a jar down here um, that I should be able to put down in the center of this setup. And these should be able to reach. And I'm going to place myself a relay on it. And we are going to send to this one relay. And that source is going to go in here. And these things should start speeding up, I think, as soon as we link this to the jar. So we should see like bolts of source that run through through this. Uh, maybe not. You know what? I might just use the single splitter here. Let's remove this connection and let's do some jars. Go ahead and make a couple more jars. I thought that it could reach up to two blocks, but it might be a single block that it can reach from. So let's try this. Yes. So that'll reach from a one block distance here. Uh, unless it was directly linked. Okay, so I think what we could also do is just right click here and then just select and this can also send to multiple locations. So look how cool that looks, by the way, that it is sending like that. And this is really going to speed this process up. So now it happens almost instantaneously. And so this is how we're going to do a lot of our setups. Now, this is just barely touching the surface of what Ars Nouveau can do because there's a whole section related to just spell books and creating your own sort of program slash spells. Ah, but this is fantastic. This is exactly what we need to get the Drigme set up, which we're gonna talk about more here in the future whenever we actually need to use the Drigmes. But we are gonna need all of this source that you see behind me in order to fuel them to be able to get them to process the things that we want. But with this, at least, one of the hardest things is technically out of the way. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Of course, if you did, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and also give this video a huge thumbs up. I really appreciate it, guys. And well, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to the Reverend. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member, and honestly supporting in one of the best ways possible. Thank you guys so, so very much. I hope to see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.